So I just got an email promising to show me how to know if I was gripping the stick correctly. It dovetails with some questions I've been getting in the coaching group I co-lead with my friend Jacob Evans, which sent me down a rabbit hole which included investigating one of the most venerated teachers in drums. Everywhere you look, there are videos and courses promising to show you the right way to hold the stick. But here's the problem. A lot of them are totally different. Like, should you hold the stick between the thumb and forefinger, or rest it on the middle finger? Should the back fingers be on the stick, or off? Where should the thumb be? Exactly on the side? On the top a little? On the bottom? And you should absolutely not let the thumb move, except when you should. Finally, you should allow space between the thumb and index finger, except when you shouldn't. And if you check out a who's who of the best players, you can find people making every variation work. But maybe there are still some basic laws of physics all of these approaches have in common. What's the meta of the diaspora of stick techniques? Is there a source code, or is it literally anything goes? Today we talk about it. Stay tuned. And guys, quick sponsor message. Today's lesson is brought to you by the joint 80-20 drum flow group coaching session that Jacob Evans and I lead, which has been closed, working its way through the latest cohort of students who joined in March and April, but which is set to open again soon. If you want to get on the list to hear about that next open enrollment, it's free to get on the list. Just click the link below the player and enter your email address in on the next page, and we'll make sure to notify you. Anyway, on with the show. Let's start with an example. I've had at least four teachers teach me hand technique completely differently. The first teacher will save till later. Besides the latest teacher, his approach was actually the closest to what I do now. Ironically. The second teacher told me to hold my wrists horizontally and make sure my thumb was on the exact side of the stick, like this. I think I remember he played with a decent amount of wrist and managed to make it work for him. My third teacher emphasized fingers a lot. He wanted me to hold the stick more or less the way I do now, except with my thumb way more on top. And there were a lot of fingers. Exercises like this one. He was also the first guy who was super into rebound. So we'd have to do pad exercises with the stick bouncing all the way back to the starting position, but with a kind of French grip finger underneath thing. And we did this doubles drill where you make the second bounce of the stick louder than the first, but using fingers to do it. The trouble was I could never make the stick travel vertically with the fingers unless I resorted to something more like French grip. My fourth teacher was heavily into the thumb and forefinger fulcrum. I spent countless hours trying to keep a death pinch on the stick at the exact spot I'd drawn a ring with a sharpie. He also emphasized rebound a lot, so there was a lot of full stroke practice. And here, I'm death gripping between the thumb and the index finger to keep the stick from falling through my hand when I'm holding it vertically. How, how often does that happen when you're playing in real life, right? I have to say, when I was teaching in-person lessons right after graduating from college, this is the approach I taught just because it was so systematic. And looking back, I generally regret that. Gradually, through years of playing, I started to discover some things on my own, which I'll talk about later. But suffice it to say, I no longer play with a strict thumb and index finger fulcrum. My fifth teacher, since I'm co-coaching a course and I had to take the course to coach it, was actually Jacob. Jacob mainly reinforced a lot of the things that I'd sort of figured out over the years by instinct, but also gave me another insight. Don't worry about rebound so much. Which is more like my second teacher, the thumbs on the sides guy. So is there a right way? Let's turn that question around and ask instead, is there a wrong way? It's not as ridiculous a question as you might think. You can make some pretty ridiculous things work. Let's try it out. This is a classic one, but you can totally play with the stick between the index and middle finger. You can also play with the stick backwards in your hand.
You can for sure play by just death gripping the stick as if it's duct taped to your hand. In a more reasonable realm, trad grip is a perfectly reasonable approach, so why not play double trad? I think you'll agree, while these grips are all possible, they're not necessarily optimal. And for pretty obvious reasons once you dig down. Take for instance the stick between two fingers. For starters, it's going to be harder to play with volume because there isn't a shelf of bone limiting the upward travel of the stick. You can squeeze the stick really hard between your knuckles, or you can rotate your wrist. But it's going to feel awkward. I'd wager it's more likely to produce injury. I mean, how come we don't hold swords between those fingers? Or chef's knives? Or branches when we climb things? Or opponent's wrists in grappling? Nature gave us opposable thumbs, and it seems like there are big innate physical advantages to gripping things the way a newborn grips a finger. Next, why not just play with the stick facing backwards? Well, you lose the whole range of motion and the ability to play with both hands in front of you. Traditional grip survived for a long time because it eliminates most of these problems. Though unless your drum is tilted, you need to hold your wrist at a slightly awkward angle or else tilt one shoulder. And trying to play double trad grip illustrates why single traditional is probably a less versatile grip than matched. Though I still love it and use it for certain things. It's harder, for instance, to play a cymbal and have your arm weight behind it. It's doable, but it's harder. Let's take all these reasons weird grips are inferior and derive some first principles from them. First, efficient volume without injury. This is why the between the finger grips aren't as good. By efficient, I mean you can get a lot of volume without using a ton of energy. But there are grips that do that but also risk injury long term, so I made that its own separate category. Next, the range of motion in vertical and horizontal planes. By holding the sticks like a handshake, or chef's knife, tree branch, or ladder rung, I can swing my arm as high as I need without contorting my wrist, and also move in the horizontal plane by rotating my wrist, or making a windshield wiper motion at the elbow. Finally. Touch. With the handshake grip, I can allow a lot of rebound. Or lock the stick down for something like a rim shot. It's that variable pressure that allows everything from buzz rolls to open doubles to drop catch strokes to really quiet touch stuff to loud rim shots. So look at those principles. Volume without injury, range of motion in all planes, and finally touch. Pretty basic, right? And look at the only hard and fast rules we've got for techniques so far. Hold the stick like a handshake, and not in some weird way that doesn't utilize our innate mechanical advantages. And you'd think that a lot of techniques of all the great drummers are just variations on these principles, and otherwise it's all kind of down to taste. But is that true? Let's look at how this cashes out. First, we want efficient volume without injury. Are all approaches created equal for this? Well, not exactly. Take the thumb and forefinger grip. If you're playing loud rim shots, it's way more efficient to grip the stick with the back fingers and leave the front fingers loose. Watch Matt Garska here. Same thing. The reason is, if you're concentrating most of your pressure between your thumb and index finger, the stick is going to want to fall through your hand. And you're going to have to death grip it with that original fulcrum. And in reality, the more great players play big venues where they have to project, the more they revert to that kind of back of the hand grip type of thing. But then why are we still teaching the front fulcrum? Next principle. Range of motion in all planes. A purely finger stroke is really angle dependent, which is why drummers like Tony Williams often rotated their elbows inward so they could play French grip. A more practical grip is one that allows the stick to rebound agnostic to the angle of the hand. What you arrive at is a sort of fixed back fulcrum, variable front fulcrum, like this. When you're playing with the elbow externally rotated, oftentimes the thumb is going to be on top of the stick. So the rebound 
loads up the fingers, and then the thumb is acting as the doorstop. When you're playing something in front of you, the pad on your index finger between your first and second knuckle kind of plays this role. Watch Nate Wood here. When he plays the ride cymbal, the thumb is on top, and when he plays the snare, it's more of the handshake angle, with the pad of the index finger on top. I'm also going to argue for the Murray Spivak thing in here too, and say there's a reason people created those ergonomic keyboards. The wrist is not meant to pronate for long periods of time. It's going to be easier to avoid injury if this part of the wrist stays relatively straight. And the way to achieve that is by varying the rotation of the hand by the angle that the surface you're playing is to your shoulders. So just for instance, if I'm playing over here, the hand's rotated underneath to stay straight. If I'm playing way over here, I can rotate the wrist down, the wrist stays straight. If I'm playing right in front of me, I rotate it at this kind of 45 degree handshake angle so that this stays pretty straight. It's not perfectly straight, it's pretty straight. It's not pronated like that. My one critique of Murray's thing, the way some people apply it, is it ignores the back fingers. So he talks about this three point grip between thumb, index finger and middle finger with the stick resting here. It kind of keeps the back fingers out of the whole equation. In my humble opinion, there's no good reason not to just let the butt of the stick rest on the pad at the back of your hand, like so, and then curl the fingers around it. That solves the volume without injury problem. Remember, when we're playing super loud, we want the back fingers to be engaged on the stick. Finally, touch. It's here that all the acceptable grips are more even. You'll see classical snare drummers with trad grip or finger grip or marching style Germanish grip, or the more Murray Spivak style American grip. It's really when you add volume to the mix that some of these other grips are inferior in the long run, in my humble opinion. All of which leads Jacob to say, it's a binary. Technique is either good or it's bad. So, why do so many great drummers do different things? Well, I'm not so sure that's true. A lot of them say they do different things, and a lot of them do different things at low and medium volumes, but when they have to play loudly, almost every good player you watch will follow these same basic rules, whether or not they talk about it. So let's review. In my opinion, these are probably the first principles of how to grip the stick. There are other ways to do it, but they may not be the most efficient with the lowest injury risk. The handshake grip, as opposed to between the fingers or backwards or trad, the way our hands evolved to hold things. The Murray Spivak adaptable angle thing, because it's an awkward position to hold the hand pronated. That's why people get carpal tunnel from typing. A fixed back fulcrum, because that allows you to produce extremes of volume with more efficiency. A variable front fulcrum, because that leverages the efficiency of rotating the wrist. And allows the stick to rebound freely at a bunch of different angles. What follows from this is probably not a death grip between the thumb and index finger, and a bigger space between those two fingers. Whew. Did we do it? Well, I know we're gonna have some spice in the comments for this one, so as long as it's constructive, bring it. Anyway, that's how you get the gig. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you'd like to hear more about the next open enrollment for the joint coaching program Jacob and I do, just click the link below the player and enter your email address. It's free to register. Dudes, it's been real. Always enjoy these. I'll see you again real soon in another lesson of the week.